Hi, I'm Wendy. Welcome to my West Coast Garden. Today we're going to talk about zucchini transplants. This is one video in a series of three on transplants. If you look on my channel, there's another on tomatoes and I will also be doing one on peppers. So zucchini are actually one of the easier plants to grow. You just have to really get your setup right. But once they're in the ground and sort of at this size, you can see there's lots of um, plants coming into bloom. There's um, a little tiny zucchini here. Um, at, but getting the setup right is essential. Where I live, getting them to germinate in the ground can be a bit tricky, but once they're established, your biggest problem is going to be making enough friends to give away all the produce to. Zucchini are in the squash family and grow with cucumber and greens in my three-year crop rotation. You can see a picture of that here. In my three-year crop rotation, they're planted the third year after I lime the soil because they tolerate a lower pH of around 6 to 6.5, which is lower than either brasilics or um, solanums. Zucchini are heavy feeders, which means they need really nutrient-rich soil. Um, to this bed, I have added manure and um, fertilized the plants with organic soluble fertilizer the first couple of weeks after planting planting and I'll do it again now that they've started producing female flowers which you can see here there's a flower with a little tiny zucchini on the end so you can tell that's a female flower as opposed to a male flower so on this plant over here you can see there's both a male flower whoops which I've just pulled off um, but it has nothing it has nothing below it and a female flower where you can see it has a little zucchini at the base. And so the male flowers, you'll sometimes see them thrown in salads and used as sometimes a decoration or a garnish. So transplanting zucchini can be a little bit tricky. Um, plants in the squash family don't really like to have their roots disturbed, but if you're careful and mix in a little bone meal and peat moss into, into the planting hole, you can minimize the transplant shock. Another trick with zucchini is that they have both male and female flowers. On the female flowers, you will see mini zucchini at the flower base. If you have lots of pollinators in the, your yard, they'll transport the pollen from the male flowers to the female flowers. Um, but if you don't see that happening or if you have several varieties planted together, you may want to try hand pollinating. That will reduce the risk of cross pollination. Cross pollination is uh, essentially a way that you can breed together different versions of the same plant. So if you have, for example, um, two different uh, types of carrots, um, one of which is a purple variety and one of which is a yellow variety, you can potentially take the flowers of those and cross-pollinate the pollen from the male flower of one onto the female flower of another. And you can then end up with plants that are a mixture of the two types. So essentially the reason you might not want that in a plant context is that if you have a particular type of zucchini that you want that say um, a particular size or a particular amount of water content relative to other zucchini or a particular color, if you cross-pollinate, with another type of zucchini plant, you're gonna get plants still because they're similar enough in terms of their genes that they can essentially breed together. But you're going to end up with not having those traits that you were looking for in that particular zucchini. So for example, if you wanted um, one that had a brighter green color and then you had one that had a darker green color and you mix them together, they might you might end up with something that's a mixture of the two, you might end up with only one of the two and it's kind of hard to predict what's going to happen because the genetics is really complicated and potentially you don't know what the result's going to be even if you understand the genetics of the plant completely and all of the, the genes involved. So because it's super unpredictable, unless you're looking for that unpredictability, you probably just don't want to cross-pollinate. And so hand pollinating between flowers would stop pollinators from picking up pollen from one type of plant and sending it over to another type of plant that is similar enough that it can essentially um, create a fruit from that pollen. Personally, I have quite a few flowers that attract pollinators in my garden. 
and so I'm not really too worried about um, there not being enough pollinators in my yard. Um, so I just let nature take its course. And normally I just have a couple of plants and am rewarded with more than more zucchini than I can possibly keep up with. This time I got a little bit carried away because I wanted to do some experimenting and I think I have uh, probably about six zucchini plants as well as a spaghetti squash, a cantaloupe and a couple of um, pumpkins and so I, I'm sure that I will be giving um, zucchini away to friends and family throughout the season. So, and that's really all there is to say about zucchini. The only other tip I would offer is that um, zucchini, when they start to mature, they kind of mature fast. And they're not really very good when they get too big. So um, you want to kind of pick them when they're the size that you see in the grocery store. If you leave them, and uh, or go away on holidays when you have some immature ones. Sometimes you come back to gargantuan zucchini that tend to have a lot of water in them. And they're, I don't especially love them, so I try and pick them when they're just a little bit um, less mature. So that's, that's all there is to growing zucchini. Um, and zucchini, once, once they're established, in the west coast seem to do really really well and um yeah so good luck growing them <laughs>